Welcome to the Sri Lankan Understanding, a platform on which we explore the past taken by Sri Lanka, an island in the Indian Ocean. We look at the present and we explore the potential for the future. Our topic for conversation today is preserving the past for posterity. Our guest today on the show is Dr. Saroja Vettasinghe, the former Director General of the National Archives of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for taking time to join us on the program today, uh, Dr. Vettasinghe. If we were to start off by asking you, why should any society preserve its past? Yeah, thank you, Dr. George Cook, first of all, for inviting me to this platform. Well, I mean, we all take our decisions as well as uh, face challenges through our past experience. We base most of the decisions on what we have gained through the past. And also, the Confucius has already um, mentioned a Chinese philosopher that um, study the past if you would like to define the future. So it's uh, actually without past, there won't be any future. If, for an example, if you take the first document whoever gains after their birth is birth certificate. By any chance, if we lose the birth certificate, what would we do? I mean, uh, if our parents do not um, protect those certificates, we would not have been able to enter into a school even uh, could not have been possible to obtain a job because we needed uh, always, I mean a anyone in the society needs certain valuable records for their living as well as for their existence. Actually uh, always the past, historic past and preservation of that leads to the root of the community and its people. So, I think uh, unless we preserve the past, we will not have a future. All the society in the world, they have their particular shapes of their past. We Sri Lankans also have our own past traditions and all that. And for an example, if you um, see the records which have been created due to uh, during the 1660s, even now they are being used for proving uh, their land uh, ownerships and also the voters registers which have been created uh, during the past years have been used for proving their residency, uh, especially these days when children need to be admitted to schools, they need to prove their residency. So many people come and take extracts of those. So naturally, the preservation of the past is an essential for our living for today as well as for the future. Absolutely. And you talked about identity. Yeah. And I guess this is one of the most important things we get yeah. out of preserving the past, of knowing yeah. where we have come from. A simple document like a birth certificate has so much of value, so yeah. much of importance, yeah. uh, relevance throughout life. Yes. Uh, if we were to talk about you, you have been a leading archivist in this country. When you look back at the last several decades, how effectively have we done archiving in Sri Lanka in terms of preserving what we have done in the past? Actually, uh, preservation is a scientific process which stops decay or destruction. Normally when uh, in the archives, because archives is the field which I am very much familiar with, uh, but when we talk about the preservation of the past, we have monuments, sites and museums, antiquities and so many things in our legacy. But I would prefer to focus more towards the archives. Um, 
when uh, archives are to be preserved, first of all we have to focus our attention to where are we going to store these archives. The design of the building itself is very much considered as well as the environmental conditions like lighting and temperature, humidity, um, all these uh, facts have to be taken into consideration. In addition, good housekeeping is a must, you have to check them regularly. Not only that, uh, normal uh, in addition to normal routine of uh, preservation and conservation. There are many projects which, uh, which had been undertaken by the archivist from uh, 1947 onwards, uh, all the heads of the institution with their teams, supporting teams, uh, they have been doing lot of work and some of the foreign funded projects as well as locally funded projects have been going through and um, earlier before the Department of Government Archivist was formed, uh, Historical Manuscript Commission was there and uh, with, with the help of that uh, commission members, all the valuable historically important documents were collected and got copied them. And uh, they have started preserving them and also there are five bulletins which have been made uh, through this historical manuscript commission's records. In addition, uh, there was a Ford Foundation project which uh, was there in 1980s. Uh, they microfilmed all temple records. And uh, as a novice officer, when I joined the National Archives in 1983, I was supposed to look after that collection and every month had to check the microfilms to see whether there are problems in it. Uh, so, likewise, there, are, there were many projects from the assistance of the Netherlands National Archives as well as Netherlands government to preserve and restore uh, Dutch records in our archives. Um, and also uh, in one of the projects, there were four pr projects ranging from 2002 to 2013. Um, so, in one of the projects, uh, they taught us uh, Dutch language to all Sri Lankan staff officers as well as for graduates. And also they upgraded the then search room with certain microfilm breeders uh, and they microfilmed many Dutch records. Um, and uh, also we could manage to publish certain Dutch records after translating them into English uh, under those projects. Uh, so, quite uh, a lot we have done with the assistance of the mm -hmm. Netherlands. And also, um, we have started, I mean with local funds, digitizing Times collection, which was um, uh, purchased by then director National Archives, when the Times press was closed down. And it has nearly 300,000 photographs. All the photographs have been digitized and there are paper cuttings as well. Um, and also, uh, we have done digitization of uh, sound records like folklore and certain speeches of um, executive president J. Uh, and also, uh, we have certain I mean, we have uh, taken special measures to preserve um, color slides of temple paintings. Uh, actually, they are being stored in night 
uh, canisters which contain uh, nitrogen uh, gases and within a freezer, a freezer those containers are being housed. So, that is a lot of measures that have been taken. Yeah, quite a lot. And of course, you mentioned all the funding that we have received for it as well. Yeah. So, many people are probably not aware of what some of these documents are, but I yeah. want to talk to you about that in the next segment. What exactly are we preserving? What are some of the documents we have in Sri Lanka? When we come back on our next segment of the Sri Lankan Understanding, oh. we are in conversation with Dr. Saroja with the singer, and we are talking about the need to preserve the past for posterity. Welcome back to the Sri Lankan Understanding. Dr. Mithra Singer, before the break, you talked about various measures that have been taken for preserving the past. If you can tell us, what are some of these documents that we actually have in Sri Lanka? Many people have seen the archives, many people know that we have records, but we don't know what's inside it. At least some people don't. Yeah, actually, I mean, there are quite a lot. Like, uh, if you take it as linear kilometers, it's about 23 linear kilometers. And uh, there are a lot of record groups, we call them lots. And uh, from lot 1 to nearly 723 lots are available. And one of the record groups out of those is private collections. Uh, the number was given as lot 25. In that, there are 25.1 to 320. Wow. So, altogether more than 1000 lots are there. Uh, actually, the original records which we possess are from the Dutch period. That means, from 1640 uh, onwards, we have original records. Although we were on our maritime provinces were under Portuguese, we do not have any original records. Uh, but there are certain microfilms of those which had been taken, uh, I mean, got down from Goa as well as from uh, uh, other countries, whoever had Portuguese records. And uh, these Dutch records uh, are very important because uh, there are Dutch council minutes as well as especially the uh, correspondence from VOC, I mean VOC, the uh, mm. governing body. And also, uh, there are certain tombus. Tombus, maybe you are familiar with that word, even in uh, Sinhalese we call tombu. Uh, for somebody wants to know about somebody. Uh, so, tombu actually that is a group of record which gives details of people. Like there are head tombus and land tombus and school tombus. Head tombus would give you the details of the family uh, and also the relationship. And land tombus give the, uh, uh, they are land uh, uh, details like how many, uh, I mean at that time it was not, um, area was not considered as acres or whatever, it was uh, considered as uh, num by number of uh, trees. Oh. Like uh, I mean to know about the extent of the land, uh, they say I mean about 50 coconut trees, 10 jack trees. Uh, something like that. Uh, then only people would know what is the extent of that particular land. And also school tombus, where you have the details about the children who had gone to the school in that area. So, good source of information. And as I said earlier, there, these tombus have been used for proving their hereditary as well as for claiming their land ownership. In addition, the British records are quite a lot and uh, they are also um, governors memoirs and dispatchers and 
uh, all the um, uh, work what they have done I mean during the British period there are, there were certain departments created like survey department was the oldest department which we have. So, the all the correspondence had been taken place those are available and also there are quite a lot uh, impressive information in uh, a lot called pending files. I mean all the co construction work which had been done uh, they are available like for an example if you take uh, uh, Ruan Valley Sai restoration process all the diagrams and everything are there uh, uh, those are superb volley, uh, files if anybody could edit them and publish that would be a, quite a lot and also there are service tenure uh, records and also crown grants and ordinances acts after 1947 um, and also uh, there are land settlement records birth, death and marriage certificates. There are certain um, palm leaf manuscripts which uh, uh, have these uh, birth, death and marriage mm -hmm. recorded. So, uh, the, uh, in 1800s and also um, there are um, confidential records which are like cabinet papers and um, presidential commission inquiry records and ministerial committees records and presidential secretariat records. I mean after the tenure of every president all the records to be transferred to the national, national archives. archives. Um, and uh, also there are audiovisual records like microfilms of Portuguese period, some of the microfilms and also uh, some Dutch records um, and newspapers. We have quite a, I mean from 1832, since 1832 we have newspapers which have been published in the country and also I mean as the legal deposit we have publications printed in the country from since 1885. Um, and also there are I mean audi in the audiovisual collection there are folklore and some singular music uh, and also uh, color slides as I mentioned earlier uh, of the temple paintings uh, and also black and white prints. Uh, there are and also uh, I mean in 2004 we started. Uh, national film, television and sound archives. So, we have about uh, 234 cine films 35 millimeter uh, which were given by uh, the National Film Corporation. Okay. In addition there are about uh, three films of private collections and also among the private collections this Liver Brothers collection is one of the famous ones and also we have uh, Solius Mendes's line drawings of Kalania temple uh, and many things and also I mean during the British period uh, I, I have to focus on this Candian convention one of the most important documents and also Hagurang Ketha treaty. Uh, during the Dutch period, uh, I mean it was signed uh, Dutch governor and the uh, king in Kandy. So, there are quite a lot which, uh, which have been preserved for. It is a very rich base for a researcher. Yes. Going forward, uh, this is where people like Dr. Jane Russell have said that when doing research in Sri Lanka, you do not have to dig deep just yeah. scratch the surface and there is so much of material, so yes. much of information, data to go into. Yeah. When we come back on our next segment, we are going to look at other aspects of the past and how they are being preserved as we go into the future on our next segment of the Sri Lankan Understand.
Welcome back to the Sri Lankan Understanding. Before we went to the break, we talked about documents, actual documents, films, things that we have within our um, storage. When we look to the future, we've done a lot in the past, we've preserved the past. What more can we do in the years ahead? Yes, quite a lot. Actually, we have, uh, I mean, in addition to the uh, documental heritage, we have intangible cultural heritage, which, which is quite a lot. And uh, it's been all, I mean, everywhere around the country. Uh, there are measures which had been taken into consideration. And of course, we have, as I said, there are audiovisual records which which led to the preservation of uh, intangible cultural heritage like folklore and music and films, etc. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, the convention uh, to preserve or safeguard intangible cultural heritage was brought up in UNESCO in 2003 and it came into uh, active process in 2006 and we in Sri Lanka we have this uh, national committee on safeguarding intangible cultural heritage with the assistance of that uh, we could manage to uh, get inscribed two entries in the world register um, one is ring puppet mm. art the other one is Dumbara mat and also I have to say there is a memory of the world register as well. Uh, in that Sri Lanka could manage to get inscribed in the world register too with the collection of Dutch records available in Sri Lanka and also the tsunami archives available in Sri Lanka. And also I mean if I focus what we need to do further, uh, we have now di digital components like now we have digitized about 90 percent of our map collection, more than 900 historical maps as well as more than 3000 maps from the survey department. Now we have digitized about 90 percent and also there are other digitized material like sound records we have digitized and photographs we have digitized. So we need to preserve these digital records. So the present DG actually trying to, I mean she had already laid the foundation for it like to digital, um, trusted digital repository is to be uh, planned uh, in the national archives which is a, quite a lead and also like awareness among school children and also to have a national policy on archives is a must for future. Uh, that is probably one of the most important things, having a strategy, having a plan, yeah. knowing where we want to go, what we want to do and how we want to use all of this material. Yeah. We have and, uh, so much, it is yeah. very important to go back and use this uh, data. We have to do research. Absolutely. I mean earlier when I joined the archives, there were many university professors and students coming to do research. Of course, it is being faded now, not very many people come for research as such, very rare. Of course, foreigners, they visit not the Sri Lankans. I do not know whether they do not want to use the original records or whether they are I mean not interested in doing research or what. But I hope and wish archives will be utilized by many local personnel, I mean not to day to day work, no, not for the needs of day to day activities for research as well. This is a research institution where people should take uh, and use, make use of that, of this valuable cultural heritage. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Singha. Thank you so much for sharing not only your years of experience, but also telling us where we can go forward, what else we can do. Yeah. We've been in conversation with Dr. Saroja, with the singer, the former Director General of the National Archives of Sri Lanka, and we've been focusing on the need to preserve the past for posterity. Join us again on the Sri Lankan understanding as we explore another aspect of this country where we are right now and what potential we have for the future.